Are you ready to hustle? I need to hustle, hustle. Welcome to The Hustle with Justin Harrison, the ultimate podcast for money, motivation, and inspiration. In this season of The Hustle, we're focusing in on your personal finance questions. Everything from saving to investing and figuring out your path with money, we've got you covered. So today we have Johan with us and Johan has got a couple of personal finance questions. Like a lot of people who listen to The Hustle, he is obviously trying to figure out his journey into money and wealth and trying to figure out how to make the best with what he has. So Johan, you've got a question lined up for us. What do you want to ask today? Yes, I'm 41 years old. I've got a 250,000 rand credit card debt. I on average make between 35 and 45,000 rand a month. That's with some extra income, with my current income, and with extra travel perks. Normally, the previous few years, I was able to to just pay up my credit card again and again. This last year, it has built up to a point where I am unable, that confidence of being able to repay it, I'm unable to do that anymore. What is there that I can look at to restructure how you look at this type of credit card debt. At first, it didn't look big to me. I was able to just look at it, but now I am afraid to even open up my app. So, Johan, the first thing to obviously point out is that uh, 250,000 rands worth of credit card debt. I mean, let's just just put this into perspective. That's quarter of a million rand. Yes. Um, And that is, you're going to be paying a very high interest rate on credit card debt. So before I give you direct actionable advice. We need to first establish, do you own a home and do you have equity in your home? Yes, I do own a home. In terms of equity, can you quickly just give me more insight on what you need on equity as as such? So do you currently owe less money on your bond than the total bond amount that you applied for? Yes. In essence, the home is paid up. Okay. Do you have a reserve amount available on your bond? Is it a flexi bond that you are able to access? Yes. In essence, the, the home is already paid up. Uh, what we do is yearly, uh, we would go and move some of the money out of it and put it in trust for our children to prepare for the education. And then now and then we'll use some of that money. But in essence, we do have a flexi. The home is paid up and it is worth more than the credit card debt that we have. Okay, so your immediate steps that you need to take is, first of all, you want to use the equity that's available to you in your home loan to completely settle your credit cards, completely. Now, the reason why I say this is you're going to be paying a much lower interest rate in the bond of your property than you're going to pay on a credit card. The interest rate's going to be a lot lower, so it's going to allow you to pay that debt off quicker. That's the first thing. The second thing is you've got to commit to getting rid of those credit cards completely. Credit cards are an absolute death trap when it comes to personal finances. And the reason why it's a death trap is because a lot of people, the limits get raised gradually over time. And then what happens is the more you spend, the more limits you get. And it's not always relative to what you're earning. And if I look at what you're currently earning versus the quarter of a million rands worth of credit card debt you have, you've got yourself in some real trouble. So the short answer to this is you've got to get rid of the credit card. You've got to get rid of it first and foremost because it is the most dangerous financial instrument that has ever been provided to consumers. Secondly, you have to get rid of that debt into a cheaper form of debt. It's almost like consolidating your debt. And so, you know, depending on what your home loan interest rate is, I mean, let's just say you are currently sitting at prime, which is about 11% or thereabouts. If you take the historical average, it's about 13%. It is still considerably lower than what you're going to be paying on credit card debt. And the majority of money that you put into paying something off is going to be interest-based. So you've got to get down to lowering your interest rates. And the only way is to move your debt out of the credit card and into something like your home loan. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, and let this be the biggest financial lesson of your life. A credit card, whilst many people consider it a form of security during tough times, is quite possibly the very thing that's going to sink you financially. And I think you get that now that you've got quarter of a million rands worth of debt. So, you know, my advice to you is, You've got to get out of the credit card, get out of it permanently, and never, ever come back to it. In fact, I would highly encourage you after this conversation to go cut up the credit cards, settle that account, and never, ever, ever take a credit card again until you truly have control over your finances. 
Because honestly speaking, on the amount of money that you're earning, you should never even have a credit card limit over 20, 30,000 Rand, ever. And you should be able to set it within the same month. Even that is too much. Because the general rule is you should only use about half of what's available to you. So, you know, if you've got a 30,000 limit, you shouldn't be using more than 15,000. To get yourself into a quarter of a million rands worth of credit card debt is just insanity. And you've got to look at yourself in the mirror and realize you've made a big mistake, fix it, and move on. Thank you. Thank you. It's like you never know that it's wrong up until somebody tells you it's wrong or you realize it's wrong. And I think the realization that it was always easy to recap that debt and pay it off. But up until you realize you have a problem now, you are unable to do it, then you realize that the problem is has been there always. And the insight and the knowledge is, you can't hear it. You, you, you want to run away from it. Hence, I'm here. I do not want to run away. Well, Johan, the other problem is that uh, I always equate credit card debt to being an alcoholic. And, you know, first you first you drink a few sips of wine, then it becomes a glass of wine every night, then it becomes two nights, then it becomes three glasses, then it becomes four glasses, and before you know, you drink your whole bottle every night. And this is the problem with credit card debt because it creeps up on you. So let it be a lesson. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to be honest with those around you, and it just has to stop. So now that we've got that out the way, let's get on to your second question. We want the best for our children. I see the school that we that they are enrolled in is around about, say, 50,000 rand a year for the child. Should we invest 50,000 rand a year on our children at these schools, or should we save up this money and prepare this money rather for university or other institutions where the children would grow better? Is 50,000 rand a year worth it for normal school education? as it stands in South Africa? So I think that's a great question and it really depends on a lot of factors. So for example, do both you and your wife work? That's the yes. most important question. Okay, so in the instance of both you and your wife working, you then need to sit down and really work out what does your wife earn? Is it worth her being at a job and then sending them to traditional schools and home care and all of the stuff that comes with being two parents working. Because a lot of people, the secondary partner in the relationship earns money, but when you take that money off the tax and you boil it down and you break down what you're getting for it, sometimes it makes sense for that partner rather to stay at home and participate in a home education platform for your kids as opposed to sending your kids to school. So that's the one option you need to consider. The other thing is, I'm, I'm assuming based on the fees that you are talking about, you're talking about Model C schooling versus public schooling, because public schooling obviously is, is pretty cheap yes. if you're in a normal public school. Model C schools, you're obviously going to pay quite a pay quite a bit more, and obviously it's not quite private schooling. So my answer is is from personal experience. I've got three children who I'm putting through through school. I have had my kids at private school. I've attended Model C schools. I've looked at the curriculum. And so my answer is based on not just your financial situation, but based on my outward view on the world. I don't believe that the South African education system, IEB, is preparing our kids for the real world. I think there is a huge deficit in the education system. And so the only real option, if you are going to send your kids to a proper school in this country, is to send them to a school that is Cambridge aligned, which means that you're probably going to be paying private school fees. So Model C schools, whilst they have great values and everything and there's some really good schools out there, I don't believe paying the extra money is giving them the extra education. It's giving them access to slightly better facilities, but not necessarily a better education. Great example of this, my daughter was in a private school. We were paying iniquitous sums of money every year and we were still doing the same syllabus as a government school. And that for me is a major problem. Now, as to your question is, should you rather save the money for the kids tertiary education that is also going to depend on what your kids are wanting to do and i say this very specifically what do the kids want to do because a lot of parents have an idea what they want for their kids and that usually ends in tears when the kids go first year second year varsity only to discover this is not what they want to do so my piece of advice is really have deep conversations with your children 
really figure out what their strong points are. Maybe have them assessed. Maybe try and figure out a path in the career for them. And if it is unlikely that your child is going to study something that's going to be highly relevant in the next 20 years, then I would say possibly, yes, save up the money, but do not save it up for them and look at it purely as an education fund. Look at them as a fund to help them start a business. Look at it as a fund for them to do maybe some kind of finishing school. Maybe it's a fund for them to go travel a bit and, and get a bit of worldly experience. Maybe they're going to go to a kibbutz for a year. There's a lot of options outside of the traditional education space. So unless your child is going to be a specialist doctor, a surgeon, a dentist, an architect, something very specific that they've got in mind, I would say maybe the best route to go is, a, is somewhere between public school, private, tutored homeschooling. And I say private tutored homeschooling because it's going to come in at about the same cost and potentially your partner might not work and, and pick up the slack on that depending on your financial situation. And then I would say definitely setting money aside. I mean, if you take 50,000 rand a year and you compound this over 10 years, it's half a million rand, excluding the interest on it. If you include the interest on it compounding over the next 10 years, you're looking at possibly 1.5 to 1.7 million rand. So without a question, I would set money aside. What you set it aside for, I don't think you should be so fixed in your ideology and perhaps you need to consider that maybe your children might not want to go to university. And then the final thing I'll say is, and this I think is the most pertinent part of this conversation that relates to every parent in the country right now. Our education system, whether it be our primary all the way through to tertiary education, is falling flat on its face. We have to equip our kids outside of the education system. So even if you do decide to send your kid to that Model C school, or to, a, or to a public school, you're going to have to invest in your kids' education because our maths and science is way below the world standard. Uh, if we look at the Cambridge and Australian and American curriculums versus what we're getting back here, we are literally not preparing our kids for success in the future. So it is a question parents deeply need to consider. And I would truly encourage people to look at the homeschool-based curriculum systems because it's not like the old days. Today, it's a solid foundational platform that I think not just brings about real cost savings. And I mean, if you think about the cost of running kids to school and back, if you think about packing lunches, buying uniforms, it extends beyond simply sending your kid to school and paying school fees. When you add up all of those things and you compound that over a 10 year lifespan of the kids being in, in the school system where it's really important, I think that uh, most people will logically arrive at the point that Perhaps homeschooling is another way to go. Thank you. My last question. It's a combination now of the insight that, that you gave. I have a million rand that is currently going to be paid out to me. I've got a 250,000 rand debt on my credit card. I've got a million rand house loan or house bond that has been paid up. What is the way to do? Seeing that I will have this money, the insight was, just to pay off the credit card with the million rent that I will receive? And what would be the best way of looking at it? So the first thing you need to do is get rid of all debt, irrespective of, of what the debt is. You need to get rid of it. And the way to, to tick it off is by not by the biggest amount or the smallest amount. Look at where you're paying the most interest. Wherever you're paying the most interest, if you can only afford to settle like, let's say, three of your four debts, you settle the three that pay that you're paying the highest interest on because that's the quickest way to get out of debt. The second thing is to understand that that million rand that's coming your way, it's unlikely that that happens very often. So when it does, you've got to take it very seriously. And so I would go to the bank and I would say, look, I've got 250,000 rands worth of credit card debt. Most of that is going to be interest or a very big portion of it is going to be interest. You can either stand in line and wait for your money like everybody else or the alternative is let's negotiate and see if we can literally do away with all the interest on it. And so you just settle the original capital amounts that you that you borrowed. You'll be very surprised to find out just how um, open the banks are for negotiation when there is a capital payment available to settle debt, especially in the current economic climate that we're in. The banks are very keen to get their money back. The banks are very keen to make sure that their debts that they've got, that they at least cover the capital amount. So Go to the bank, 
put on your big boy pants and put on those negotiating shoes and negotiate your backside off because if you can if you can wipe off you know even just one third of that that's potentially an interest payments that's going to be a significant saving and i would do the same with every other form of debt but you're going to have the highest chance uh, to negotiate on something like credit card debt which is essentially unsecured unsecured debt you're going to have a very strong opportunity to negotiate on so i would say number one don't just simply pay you know go negotiate say i've got this money coming in try and see how much you can get that debt down by and then take the capital that you've got and settle all of your debt because here's the thing let's say you settled your home loan and let's assume you're paying let's just use a round figure 11 percent that is equivalent to putting that money in an investment account and earning 11% return because you're saving 11% on the interest, right? And whatever you have left after this, I would think very, very cleverly about how you use this cash. I would take 20%. I would hold it liquid and available for emergencies, whatever's left of it. And the remaining 80%, I would deploy into assets that are going to generate you a decent return that you can compound over time. So I wouldn't simply stick it in a money market account or a savings account or a 32-day account. I would look for something that you can put the money away and wrap it up for the next five to 10 years. Maybe that is a bit too long in your lifespan. So maybe you go three to five years, depending on your situation. But you need to remove the temptation of using capital because I guarantee you, if you reach into your credit card for a quarter of a million rand, it will only be a matter of time before you absolutely deplete uh, the capital. And what will happen is you'll run short on your expenses. You'll take five grand here. You'll take 10 grand there. And before you know it, you will have depleted all that capital. And so then my last piece of advice is all of these questions that you've asked today has led to one very simple problem that you have. And I don't know your financial situation, but I know the situation. You are spending more than you earn. And that creep is what's got you in debt in the first place. So what you absolutely need to do is you need to take account of the fact that you only earn X. Now, the solution to solving your problem, there's only one or two solutions. You either need to earn more or you need to figure out how to spend less. And the problem is most people focus on the earning more part. And the fact of the matter is whilst you're on your way to getting there, you're going to be spending more during this, this phase of lifestyle creep. So You've got to have a hard conversation with your family. You've got to have a hard conversation with yourself. You've got to have a budget. You've got to spend less than you earn. You've got to do away with the things that you can't afford. If you can't afford DSTV, get rid of it. If you can't afford two cars, get rid of it. If you can't afford to go and eat out, get rid of it. Get rid of the things that are putting you back financially. And if you do this consistently for the next five years, you will look back on this point in time and you'll go, I'm really glad I made a different choice. 29th May 2023, 20 minutes with Justin changed my life. Well, as I say, the proof is in the pudding, right? You got to go out and you got to do it. Hustle so hard and find that way. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the insight. And sometimes you just need to have somebody talk to you direct on a platform that is maybe open where you, you, you expose yourself so that you can be true and accept because sometimes we hide away and don't want it to be exposed because we are afraid what will people think. Thank you for guiding through this, through this opportunity where I'm able to, to speak out and know where to tackle and advance in this challenge. If you found value from this episode of The Hustle, please be sure to leave us a rating on your favorite podcasting app and also make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button to make sure that you never miss an episode of the Hustle Podcast. And the golden rule is, Hustle makes muscle. Stay motivated by The Hustle. Talkers talk, but hustlers hustle. Find more episodes at ecr.co.za or your favorite podcast app.